first time flying into space. Why don't we take a moment now to learn a little bit more about Mark and his path to becoming an astronaut. So I always, as a kid, I never would have told anybody that I wanted to be an astronaut. My attitude about that was like saying, I want to be Spider-Man or I want to be a superhero. I always thought that working in NASA would be amazing because I, I, my physics background, ph the photography you see from space, and the knowledge that we're kind of pushing the limits with our space program, all those things made NASA seem very appealing to me. The fact that I got to be an astronaut was, is gravy. And now my attitude about actually being an astronaut and actually getting to go to space that's all just in case I keep getting these bonus deals that are even better and better. So I'm uh, pretty excited about it. The thing about physics that I really like is it takes what we know, figures out a mathematical model for it, and then you can use that to try to get to what we don't know and, and theorize about things. It helps us imagine things that we can't even uh, sometimes use instruments yet to detect. And then science follows up with that to try to do experiments and try to test theories and come up with. So certainly being able to contribute to science, the space station's all about science, and it's helping NASA uh, further our exploration goals. I really think we have to keep exploring. Most of our nation's background involves people leaving what they were comfortable with and coming to a place that was new and different and very risky. So I think it's part of our national character to want to explore. Dedicating those resources to this peaceful endeavor that can actually help out all of humanity. My name is Mark Vandehei, and I'm a NASA astronaut. That again, a quick look at Mark Vandehei making his first trip into space today aboard the Soyuz 06 vehicle. As you can see from our countdown clock, we are just coming up now on 19 minutes away from launch. And you'll occasionally hear some of that music being piped. That's actually the music being piped in to the crew inside of the Soyuz spacecraft as they are strapped in about two hours before the launch and have to sit in there for quite a while before all the action starts. But we are a little under 18 minutes away from launch. Mark Van Hai, Joe Acaba, and Alexander Mazurkin strapped in and all preparations with the rocket going without any issues being tracked so far. The rocket uh, fully fueled and everything looking good so far for an on-time liftoff at 4.17 p.m. Central. And as the clocks continue to count down to the launch of the Soyuz MS-06 crew, why don't we take a moment now to learn a little bit more about Joe Acaba on his road to becoming an astronaut. I think a lot of times people will look and think that there has to be something, you know, pivotal or magical that happens in your life that is going to lead you in a certain direction. So I would tell people, you know, it's not always one thing that's going to happen that's going to change your life, but it's all the decisions you make along the way. You know, as I reflect back, I see all of these small pieces that kind of fell into place, um, starting with my parents and the value they put on education. So that was always, you know, kind of priority number one. Uh, I had a great experience at University of California in Santa Barbara and ended up continuing that and getting my master's degree in geology. 
Before I came to NASA, I was teaching uh, middle school math and science out in Florida. And then I look back at the educators that I've had in my life and being a former educator, I now see it from kind of a different angle. And I had one teacher, my metal shop teacher that I talk about often that when I look at what he did, having anywhere from 14 year olds to 18 year olds in a metal shop, working with the lathe, working with the, uh, the welders, you know, melting stuff and, you know, kind of the responsibility that he gave to us. Then I look at my Peace Corps experience and working with different cultures, which is, of course, what we're doing today with the International Space Station, a little bit of military experience. So I look at all these small things that I've done in my life that during the time, neither one of them was really pivotal, but I think they've led me to where I am today. I'm Joe Acaba, and I'm an astronaut. That was just a quick look at Joe Acaba, who's going to spend about five months as a flight engineer with the Expedition 53 and 54 crew before he returns to Earth with the two crew members inside the Soyuz with the Mark Van Hai and Alexander Mazurkin, 15 minutes away and counting from launch. As you just heard, though, Joe Acaba, a former educator um, who taught both middle school and high school, will be using his time on board the station to help bring a little bit more of the International Space Station into the classroom as we look forward to a year of education on station. We'll have two educators flying over the next uh, 12 months with both Joe Acaba right now and then Ricky Arnold scheduled for a flight early next year. Again, just using their roles as uh, former educators to help bring NASA a little bit more into the classroom and help inspire and uh, inform the next generation of engineers, scientists, and other STEM education uh, students coming up for to be uh, future NASA employees, potential astronauts, or go off into other fields that help drive our economy and uh, drive technology forward. So uh, a big boost for our educations here as we get ready to see Joe Acaba launch into space. Again, we are 14 minutes and counting away. And right now, a group of NASA representatives are there on site in Baikonur, just a short distance away from the launch pad. For a quick update on activities there, why don't we go now to NASA Public Affairs Officer Rob Navius. Dan, it has been less than seven weeks since we were here last in the Central Asian Desert, and as summer turns to fall, we're back ready for another launch to again bring the space station to a six-man crew just 10 days after three other crew members left the orbital outpost. This will be the first time since June of 2010 that two NASA astronauts will have launched from Baikonur to the station, a launch that will kick off a year of an increased NASA astronaut complement on the International Laboratory. As always, NASA's Associate Administrator for Exploration is here, Bill Gerstenmeyer, joining ISS Program Manager Kirk Scheinerman, along with a number of officials from Boeing, which was instrumental in securing the Soyuz seat for Joe Acaba to boost NASA's representation on the station. All of the preparations for launch have gotten by the book. The weather is good. Soyuz booster is fueled and ready for launch, a launch that comes just three weeks before the 60th anniversary of the launch of Sputnik 1, the world's first artificial satellite from this same launch pad, a launch that opened the door to human space exploration. That's it for now on the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Now back to you with Mission Control in Houston. And as always, a big thanks to Rob out there with the NASA teams ready to watch this launch from the viewing stands just a short distance away from the launch pad. Again, you heard him 
make mention of the Sputnik anniversary. And again, if we get any uh, the cabin views inside the Soyuz, you should hopefully be able to see the zero gravity indicator that this crew is using, which is a small Sputnik model. It's going to be hanging just above a Cabo Van Dye and Mazurkin. And the crews uh, routinely use these small indicators, uh, typically small models, toys or dolls, um, to basically just tell them when they're in zero gravity, they start to float after that third stage shutdown when the Soyuz is in its preliminary orbit, a little over 120 statute miles over the Earth. Uh, this one in particular was made for the crew by RSC Energia, uh, who's the Russian aerospace contractor that provides the Soyuz for Roscosmos. And this one in particular, uh, very symbolic as it was uh, developed by Energia and made from actual parts of the Buran shuttle. Uh, Russia's former space shuttle program. Um, so hopefully getting some cabin views throughout this flight, but if not, that's what they have in there for them. 10 minutes, 22 seconds and counting away from our planned launch today at 4.17 p.m. Central Time. Minutes till left off, please. And there, an in cabin view. Uh, right here, we're looking at Joe Acaba, who, who's at pretty much right in the middle of your screen. He's the right seater today. You can see just above his head that Sputnik model that's going to be serving as the zero G indicator. Uh, just to his left is Alexander Mazurkin, the Soyuz commander for this flight. And then in the left seat, uh, just off screen, is Mark Vandehei. So two NASA astronauts, one Russian cosmonaut on, on this flight today. And we are nine minutes and counting away from launch. And once we get to about the T-minus seven minute mark, things will definitely pick up quite a bit, as by that point all the pre-launch operations are completed. Again, this is a three-stage rocket carrying the crew into space today. That first stage consisting of four strap-on boosters in the core stage. Then the core stage continues on as the second stage. And the third and final stage is going to continue to fire until about eight minutes and 45 seconds post-liftoff. And when that shuts down and detaches, the Soyuz will be in its preliminary orbit. Okay, ears, this is Baikonur lead, and uh, through the cameras we can see the commander and FD-1. Copy all, thank you. And here review again, Mazurkin at the bottom. Mark Van Hei getting our first look at him on the top of your camera. And again, that Sputnik model floating just over Mazurkin. That's going to be the zero G indicator for today. Six minutes, 45 seconds away from the planned launch. FD2's tablets are 89% charged. Thank you. 
Okay, here's, this is Baikon lead. One minute readiness has been announced. Everything goes as planned. And I will be announcing everything during the launch. Baikonur launch, uh, Baikonur launch lead. This is Altair 1. Everything is great on board. We are ready for launch. And so again, getting good reports. Everything looking ready for launch at this point. The first and second stage engines ready for launch. Telemetry has been received from the rocket, indicating that all, that all of the primary and backup systems are indeed ready. Under five and a half minutes away. The exact launch time is targeted at 4.17 and 2 seconds p.m. Central Time. And again, you'll see the umbilicals detach, um, the ground support equipment detach from the rocket itself and lower. When the second umbilical detaches, that means you're about 15 seconds away from liftoff. And then the engines will actually fire for several seconds before the vehicle actually takes flight as they continue to just ramp up to that flight speed until they can um, basically overwhelm the force held in place by those launch locks and then it'll just press them out of the way and then the rocket will spring forward and then be on its way across the Kazakh sky. Ground measurement system is activated by run one command. Combustion chamber nitrogen purge. And we are four minutes and counting. Around this time, they'll start to purge the fuel lines and other elements of the rocket with nitrogen that helps to just fireproof them by removing any vapors of the fuel or the oxidizer that may be left over. And you can see all the helmets closed on the crew members that puts them on the suit oxygen and all the cockpit displays controls have been activated and the onboard system switching over to onboard control. Onboard measurement system is activated by run to command. Oxidizer and fuel drain and safety belts of launch vehicle are closed. Booster propellant tank pressurization was initiated. And so at this point, the booster tank being pressurized for flight. That just starting, this helps to just optimize the flow of all that fuel and helps to actually add some structural support to the rocket itself. Two minutes and counting. We're about a minute and 15 seconds away. We should hear the 
ground propellant feed get terminated any time now, and the Soyuz will be ready to switch over to internal power. Vehicle to internal power. And the vehicle now on internal power. And you can see the first umbilical there separating from the booster. That'll mean when we have auto sequence start. And getting confirmation the ground propellant feed has been terminated. We'll have one more umbilical to separate. And there you can see the engines now firing. The launch command issued. These engines now ramping up. Engine, turbo pumps at flight speed. Engines at max. And lift off. Mark Vandehei, Alexander Mazurkin, and Joe Acaba lifting off and now on their way to the International Space Station. 10 seconds. over 10 seconds already into the flight, getting good first stage performance. So used delivering about 930,000 pounds of thrust from those four boosters in the core engine. Continuing to get good calls, the vehicle's stable. Everything looking great as it sears across the Kazakh sky there, burning an image across the black. This first stage going to burn liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds into the flight. 60 seconds, your pitch roll are nominal. So the yaw, the pitch, the roll, everything determining the attitude of the rocket, basically which way it's pointing, all looking good. Continuing to get good first stage performance from the Soyuz rocket. Eighty seconds. Booster motion control system parameter. And at this point, the vehicle already moving in excess of 1,100 miles per hour. We're a little over a minute and a half into the flight since liftoff. Still getting good calls on vehicle performance, everything looking great. The next major milestone coming up is going to be that escape tower actually being jettisoned. And just got confirmation the escape tower has been jettisoned. And getting a great view there, you just saw the four strap-on boosters have been jettisoned, their job complete. So use already at an altitude of about 28 statute miles, traveling at over 3,350 miles per hour. 130 seconds, the vehicle is stable. So we're over two minutes now since the launch. Everything looking great. The first stage has done its job. Those four strap-on boosters have dropped away. That single core engine now continuing to fire. Getting confirmation from the visiting vehicle officer here that the launch shroud has been jettisoned. So the Soyuz spacecraft now exposed. The rocket's altitude about 48 miles high. And at this point in the flight, as we just passed three minutes, the Soyuz already traveling at speeds in excess of 4,700 miles per hour. And again, the core stage is the second stage, continuing to perform as expected. It's 56 feet in length, 13 and a half in diameter, and has a single engine with four fuel chambers that provide between 178,000 and 222,000 pounds of thrust depending on the altitude for its three minutes and 28 seconds of operation. This stage is going to continue to burn until about the four minute 43 second mark. Then the Soyuz will be ready to do what's called a hot stage technique. And that's when the third stage will ignite while the second is still burning. 
That's why if you remember views of that rocket, there's that lattice structure, uh, that open area between the second and third stages. And we've just crossed four minutes since launch. Two hundred and fifty seconds. Your patrol are nominal. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling fine. As you heard, the crew doing fine, getting an unprecedentedly long view of the Soyuz. A very clear night there in Baikonur. And here a view inside. There you can see Akaba. A smile. The crew doing well as the rocket continues to send them into orbit. The second stage still going. And confirmation the second stage has separated successfully. We also saw the separation of stage two and everything is nominal on board. Three hundred and ten seconds. And so at this point, the second stage has dropped away. The core booster separates at an altitude of about 105 miles. The Soyuz spacecraft now being propelled by the single engine of the Soyuz's third stage. That's going to provide 67,000 pounds of thrust and burn for about four minutes and two seconds. So the first two stages complete. The third and final stage of the climb to orbit now underway. Everything continuing to go very smoothly with this flight. Crew on board doing well, and the Soyuz continuing its climb to orbit. Three hundred and eighty seconds of flight. Thir stage thrusters operate nominally. Everything is nominal on board, and the crew is feeling fine. So we're well over six minutes now. The crew, the rocket, all doing well. Four hundred and twenty seconds, your patrol are nominal. Everything is nominal on board. The crew is feeling fine. So over seven minutes now, approaching the seven and a half minute mark soon. And the velocity of the rocket already about 13,500 miles an hour. Getting calls down from Mazurka and the crew doing well. You can see Vanda High at the top of your screen, Mazurka there in the commander's seat. And then just above him is that uh, Sputnik model, which keep your eye on it after the third stage cuts off and separates. Should see that start to float. And once the third stage is done and delivers the Soyuz to orbit, the and spacecraft will again execute all of those pre-programmed commands to get out a number of antennas and deploy the solar arrays. And again, the third stage should fire until about the eight minute and 45 second mark post-launch. So we should be approaching that very soon. 510 seconds, 520.
And there the telltale jolt that tells us that the third stage has cut off. Getting confirmation it has separated and Soyuz, confirmation of Soyuz spacecraft separation, the Soyuz now in orbit. This is Baikonur lead. Congratulations on the successful insertion and I would like to give the floor to Mission Control Moscow. Yes, we confirm the separation. Everything was nominal. Thank you very much. And we're working with Moscow Mission Control. Now this is Mission Control Moscow. How do you copy? These are Altairs. We copy you loud and clear. That's great. We are standing by for your KO report and uh, we are waiting for standing by for further operations. Copy all. And again, a successful orbital insertion. The Soyuz now in orbit and got confirmation all of the antennas and the solar arrays have deployed successfully. So textbook launch for this rocket today, delivering the crew into its initial orbit of about 126 statute miles. The third stage cut off as we saw the crew get a bit of a jolt there and dropped away. It performs an avoidance maneuver by opening a valve on its liquid oxygen tank and then falls back through the Earth's atmosphere. But the Soyuz now in its preliminary orbit, and that orbit is going to get raised over the next six hours. Control has now been passed over to the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov. We're going to oversee these three crew members as they chase down the International Space Station. Control enabled. Again, they're going to execute a series of burns over the next several hours to gradually raise their orbit. Starting out at 126 statute miles, eventually going all the way up to 250 to bring them in line with the International Space Station for that docking. Uh, it's gone through, and we are ready to report the first reading of the lift check mod for the Altair 2. Uh, 2635 is the time. A uh, sub pressure is inaudible. Bo 817. Uh, 8.58 is another reading. 18.5.19, 19.26.5.20.2.2, 21st, inaudible, 22, 3.3, 23.3, 3.329.22, 24.19.5. 25, 15.7, 26, 264, uh, propellant, 879. These are the parameters of the Form uh, 03. Copy, Altair, thank you. Uh, Moscow, Altair 1, the pre-drift indicator is not illuminated, and we are maneuvering, uh, we have a roll maneuver ongoing. Uh, copy. Have you activated TV? Uh, we are checking. We are receiving the image, Altair, on the ground. Moscow. And this is Mission Control Houston. Again, the three crew members, Alexander Mazurkin, Mark Vandehei, and Joe Akava, successful launch. They're in their preliminary orbit, and all of the solar, the solar arrays and all the antennas deployed successfully immediately upon reaching that orbit. Control of the vehicle now overseen by the Russian Mission Control Center in Koryov. They're going through a series of checkouts right now before they begin again chasing down the International Space Station. They'll have a series of burns over the next several hours, uh, which will gradually raise their orbit as they chase down the International Space Station, ultimately culminating in a docking tonight at about 9.57 p.m. Central Time, 10.57 p.m. Eastern. Uh, here's just a quick rundown of all of our upcoming events. Uh, we're gonna have launch replays coming up. We'll Stick around for a little bit and uh, give you a, a good idea of when those are coming up, but we'll have those immediately following this broadcast, and then we'll have uh, our launch video file. Um, our coverage for docking is going to resume at 9.15 p.m. Central Time, 
with again that docking planned at 9.57 p.m. After a successful docking, we'll break away for a little bit while they do a series of leak checks and other items before coming back on for the hatch opening at 11 p.m. Central. The hatch opening is scheduled to take place at about 11.40 p.m. Um, and then following that, the crews will make their way inside, say hello to the other Expedition 53 crew members, and then have a chance to speak to uh, friends and family and also program officials from NASA and Roscosmos. We're going to watch all these events unfold back in Baikonur, and then we'll have our final video file following that. As soon as the thrusters stop firing. Copy, Georgi. The second compass will be one minute after the second burn. Uh, so we will be ready, we'll be standing by for the COM uh, asset activation. Copy that. Now, please be ready for the manual control test during the next compass at page 45. It cover inhibit will be 3.5 minutes after the compass starts. So you will have enough time to, prefer to do step number one. So, uh, so the time of the uh, in ECAV in inhibit is 0152.30. Uh, I confirm, 0152.30. Moscow, this is Altair 2. Go ahead, second reading. The SAP pressure, inaudible, 816 is in bow. The next reading is delta minus one. Copy Altair Dwa. Have you checked the uh, indicators on KSP, Altair? We are checking Moscow at 003224. We have received the message. Local vertical is no issues. The message uh, ECOV inhibit is still illuminated. Copy. You know, ECOV uh, uh, have already been activated. It's just the message, and uh, I think it will uh, soon be off. Yes, we have uh, ECOV 2 message now that ECOV 2 is activated. Moscow, this is Altair 2. Go ahead, Altair 2. The KSP left and right are all nominal. The indicators on KSPs are all nominal. Copy. Could you please mark the time? And this is Mission Control Houston again, just to recap. 0100 zero, 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 at the end. Just to recap, a very successful launch today. Joe Acaba, Alexander Mazurkin, and Mark Van Hai in orbit in their Soyuz spacecraft. Right now they're running through all of their initial checkouts of the vehicle, all the antennas, and the solar rays deployed successfully following a successful nine, roughly nine-minute flight into orbit. The launch came right on time, um, uh, as expected. And then all the stages performed as expected, not tracking in, didn't track any issues with the first, second, or third stage during that climb to orbit, and delivered them into that initial 126 mile altitude to begin their chase down of the International Space Station. So with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up our launch coverage. Stick around as very shortly we'll have those launch replays. And then in just a couple of hours, we'll be back with our docking coverage. Again, that's going to be at 9.15 p.m. Central Time, 10.15 p.m. Eastern, when these three crew members dock to the International Space Station. So rocket launch views coming at you real shortly, and we'll be back in a few hours for the docking. Until then, thanks for joining us, and this is Mission Control Houston. Uh, is in on orbit.